Hi, I'm Dave Epstein, and welcome to this edition of Growing Wisdom. Today we're going to talk about bee balm and how things spread in the garden. I'm standing in front of this particular variety of bee balm. It's got this sort of light pink, light purple color. It spreads really easily. It's a little bit different than some of the other named forms of bee balm you might find, such as Jacob Klein or Marshall's Pink. You can see the bee balm behind me. There's actually some bees, and we actually saw a hummingbird or sphinx moth on it earlier. Really a cool moth. Unfortunately, the caterpillar of that particular moth eats tomatoes, so I don't necessarily like it, although it's kind of cool to look at. But that's a whole nother video. So what's, um, what I want to talk about today is how much this stuff spreads. So originally, I had the original plant back about 15 feet behind me, and it's continued to kind of spread under the ground. It kind of runs and pop up in other places. So here's the issue, the decision you have to make with some of the plants that spread. Do you like it like this? And I don't really mind it because I happen to like this particular plant, and I think this is more of a natural looking garden here. Or is it a problem and you need to rip it out? Let me show you another example. So remember, we're talking about things that spread. Here's some echinacea. This is the original patch. It was one plant. But look what's happened. Somehow it's seeded into the middle of the grass here. Now, where I just showed you the bee balm, I didn't mind that it was kind of a little bit wild, but this is a little more formal part of my gardens. I'm not necessarily keen on this. So what I can do, if I rip it out like this, what's going to happen is, I didn't really get it, right? I just took the plant out and it could look okay, but the problem is it's gonna come back next year. So what I really need to do is get in there and dig that out and then I won't have it. I just think it breaks my eye up. So things do spread in the garden, but sometimes it's necessary to pull them out. So things spread in different ways. Here I have this little carex here and uh, you can see this is really running under the ground. So I'm gonna show you. I'm not really happy about this. So this particular plant here, that was way over here. And look at it, it's coming up far from the original mother plant, we'll call it. This is a problem. So this I want to really dig out. If I, I can pull these out, I could plant this somewhere else if I really liked it. Maybe somewhere where running isn't going to be necessarily a problem. Now the other thing I got here is, look at this little Japanese maple. This kind of seeded in from a Japanese maple probably somewhere else around the house and I kind of like it so I'm leaving it here once it gets a little bigger I'll probably dig it up and put it somewhere where it can thrive. So some plants can get big in one place like this particular weeping redbud but other plants that we've shown you can run under the ground or spread by seed all over the place. Sometimes it's a good thing like this little miniature Solomon seal right at the base of the tree. It's spreading but slowly, and I can keep it in check. Other things, like that carrots we showed you, can be a real thug in the garden. When choosing plants around your yard, be sure you know how they're going to behave, not only in year one, but years five, 10, or beyond. For Growing Wisdom, I'm Dave Epstein.